taking a look at the rider, now it's time for me to actually say <laughs> all of the things that I'm, I was tempted to say earlier. It is the fact that I, ha I have had to spend an extra 30 to 40 minutes um, driving down to work thanks to the traffic that is caused by queues to filling stations. That's number one. I personally have had to spend an extra 3,000 naira in purchasing petrol. Sadly. Now, allegedly, there are also filling stations who collect, wait for it, and <laughs> I'm hoping that this surprises you as much as it surprised <coughs> me when I learned about it, gate fees. You're not paying an extra for the fuel. You're paying a gate fee to enter the filling station. Yeah. And then when <laughs> you get there, you're paying about 500 to 1,000 naira for every 3,000 naira purchase that you make. Very now, true. that is allegedly, because I purchased mine at an NNPC feeding station, and yes, they charged me extra for wanting to buy in a can. But I ask this question, if I have a generator, how do I buy fuel for it? Do I exactly. put it in my car tank and then find a way to put it in there? So if you, th if you remember, I said allegedly for the ones that I have not had to experience. But this is a personal experience where I can actually sit here boldly on this set and say, this is where we are. Okay, it is an extortion for me. Maybe I'll, I'll just say that you should just probably, it would be safe to take out the word allegedly because I physically experienced exactly what you have just said. Okay, it happened right before my very you know, as it happened. And I was about to purchase fuel and I just took advantage of the fact that I had gone through the huddles of the queue and all of that. And I told the fuel agent, full tank, fill up the tank. And he said, you know, you'll pay extra for that. And I'm like, paying extra for filling up my tank? And I'm like, okay, no problem. Just fill it. How much am I paying? He charged me 800 naira extra for filling my tank. Or oh, someone will tell you and that that's quite affordable. I yes. mean, it is and I'm like, okay. depending on where you he are. He had even said 1,000 naira. He saw somebody come in and said, just pay 800 naira. And then right in front of me, I saw people paying gate fees, you know, because I had gotten into the fuel station. The gate was locked already. And so any other person who has to pass through the second stage, <laughs> oh <my laughs> of, I mean, it, it is laughable, it really is. ridiculous, but painful, as I say. I, I think that realistically, um, we need to understand that this is not a, a fabrication. Mm -hmm. People are suffering as a result of this. Very correct. The fact that you're spending an extra time on the road before you get to your business is already affecting the free flow of you know, transactions and business activities in Nigeria. The fact that children have to wake up extra early because the drivers are trying to beat the traffic is ridiculous. Even schools At are sending messages that you shouldn't bring your children may to I, school. May I add that organizations now are cutting down on productivity exactly. because certain people cannot get to work. Uber, boats, all of these um, you know, transportation mediums are also scarce because these drivers are regular Nigerians like you and I Very who have true. cars and how to stay on the queue to buy this fuel at this ridiculous amount of money and then how much would they bill the passenger and how much is their gain you know now you're you're also putting your profits not just on the money but on the stress that you have gone through <laughs> i it's it is ridiculous where we very, are there's nothing funny ridiculous. about it i know that nigerians are resilient and it would appear that once again we're going through these things and it's the norm but this should not be the, the norm we're already paying more for electricity tariff we're already paying more for food we're already going through a hard time as a country and collectively what we're asking for is a better nigeria and let's start from not having fewer scarcity yes someone will readily readily say that nigerians are shock absorbers and whenever things like this happen you know they could smile through it but it's not normal for you to make people smile through pain it's not normal for you to make people get used to suffering and that is what i see as evidenced in what is happening currently uh, it's safe to say that, you know, uh, the, the, the state of things can be blamed on certain people because it's over the, the, the stage where you... you Eunice, who is the minister for petroleum in Nigeria? I, I mean, that's the, there's an obvious answer to that. Thank you very and, much. And we have the... The president the, is literally the, the minister of the minister. Yeah, so, I mean, he's actually out of the country or, you know, perhaps setting out to, to attend the... 
uh, conference at Belgium. And people would naturally react to this by saying, your country is biting so hard and you have the time to travel. I mean, if it were something else, like maybe one kind of event, I'm very sure he would readily send somebody to represent And the fact him. that no one is saying anything aside, you know, the regular conversations that we hear, and uh, there is how many billion of liters come... So I was listening to the radio on my way to work, and the OAP basically said whatever they are sending to us from what they have in stock could have been done two weeks ago, could have been sure. done one week ago. We don't have to go through all of these, and then they come like, you know, Superman trying to save us. They I think what Nigerians need to understand, or what these people need to understand, the people in charge need to understand is, you're not doing us a favor. Very good. It is your duty and yeah. responsibility to ensure that things go on well. And life is currently hard where it could have easily been avoided. Yeah, and you know what my fears are, in as much as the fuel subsidy removal has been suspended. At this point, where I no mean, it's removal, almost like there's paying. no difference. Yes. And I'm wondering if the subsidy is eventually removed. It's not removed yet, and it's like hell. You know, it's horrific already. Uh, I wonder what it's going to look like if eventually whether 18 months or whatever time they spring up the surprise on us and decide to remove the subsidy with the do your worst uh, kind of disposition. I mean, this is quite painful and we could just go on and on talking about it, but <laughs> I believe you have other headlines, uh, you know, um, on yes, the front page. Unfortunately, so you just want and to and not in a good on. light. Not in a good light. We'll take a look at some of the big stories that we were supposed to look at and, you know, you think about the Abakari situation and you don't even want to say anything yet. Um, let's see what happens. But I think one story that I find very interesting on our fact sheet this morning is that despite CBN's intervention, Rise records 92% price hike in six years. Okay, so basically, I, I, I don't want to seem like a killjoy. But I can't help but say this. I saw the display of uh, the pyramid and I was, you know, I saw how a whole lot of, you know, hula, balu, the whole shout and everything, you know, about the fact that we have now launched a rice pyramid and all of that. And so nobody would ever go hungry again. I mean, in quote. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we will never get hungry. But the thing is, let's look at the details. So that people don't, again, see that we're trying to be negative. Sure. The price of a 50 kg bag of locally produced rice rose by about 92% between January 2016 and December 2021, despite the virus measures taken by the federal government to drive down the cost of the staple. Findings have shown, and of course a survey of markets Across Abuja and Lagos State reveals that the current average cost of a 50 kg bag of rice is 25,000 Naira against 13,000 Naira that was the price in 2016. And this is, of course, happening around the time that we have a general infl inflation situation. This is also happening, um, and there's a smile, but this is a sad smile across my face. This is also happening while we're battling with, you know, the exchange rates and um, insecurity and the farmer situation so you put it all on the table and you realize yes it will appear we're making progress but also the progress is also not so tangible I wouldn't necessarily I'm not panning out. Actually, I, would, I, I don't want to be a downer, but I can't help it. I wouldn't necessarily say we're making progress as it stands because it's like taking 10 steps forward and taking 20 backwards. You have seen the display of, of the rice pyramid, you know, which, I mean, projections based on econ economists would mean that things would get better, especially with regards to rice production and cost, which means that uh, the average Nigerian, if he or she can't afford any other kind of food it should be rice should be the go-to so if we're seeing not just the 10 percent but 92 percent hike it calls for worry if you ask me so i think this is this is where we also have to be objective as far as locally produced rice is concerned we have progressed our farmers now have more demands our farmers also have a level playing ground to supply their products to so you cannot take that away. And that is why we have the display of the pyramid, right? However, because the cost of production is more, 
um, the insecurity has also added to, you know, um, you know what, what they call it, the cost of production in terms of your own security, the stress that you're going through. The cost of transportation has also, you know, hiked up. Um, you also think about storage and all it takes to process this rice because the cost of those things have gone up. What it means is, even though there is now more locally produced rice in the Nigerian market, the Nigerian people have to pay more for a product that should be more affordable. Which is the economic chain reaction. It's like a cycle. Take step forward and uh, a few more backward, <laughs> so you say. Um, it's unfortunate yeah. that we're here, but we'll continue to applaud the little pro progress and we continue to demand that we do better. It's time for yeah. us to say goodbye, unfortunately, um, but what can we say? Keep hope alive. Yeah, keep hope alive and it's not so cool to be facing or grappling with all of this economically and also worry about your health. So I missed all of this. Stay as safe as you can. Observe all COVID-19 protocols and be the best you can be. I am Eunice Johnson. And I am Ashashi at her saying, please continue to drive safely on the roads today. If it's possible that you can just manage what you have and not add to the fuel queues, please let's do that. Let's not be greedy. Let's not purchase more than we have space for just because we're panicking. And we appeal to those who are really in charge of these sellings and these exhaustions, don't make life difficult for the next man because... It is your time to take advantage. You can't complain about the government not doing right if you're doing just the same in your own capacity. So once again, continue to stay safe, be kind, and be a good Nigerian. Goodbye.